Hi and welcome back to Studio Tamara, the Mystical Painters. Today is a beautiful sunny day in Michigan. It's in the 70s. It's got a nice breeze off the lake. I took a break from gardening to do some plein air painting and I thought it would be really lovely to do these little wild geraniums that grow in Michigan. They're blooming this time of year. Um, I just tried to do a dandelion. Something happened halfway through the video, but um, I have most of it if you want to try and do a dandelion. Um, sending a shout out today to all the electricians. Every video I try to send a shout out to let people know in the world they're appreciated and I try to cover all jobs from the fast food industry, garbage men, secretaries, doctors, everybody. So today's shout out is to electricians. Thank you very much. And if you're interested in doing the wild geranium painting with me today, it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. So what we're going to do, I'm going to Move this up a little, put it right here, okay. Now, behind me here is, whoa, a bird. Um, all these wild geraniums, can you guys see them? Hello, we're over here. Okay, so they're beautiful and they're part in the sun and they're part in the shade. So they're gonna be tricky to do. So we're gonna be learning how to do sunny and shady shades of lilac, purple, lavender, Beautiful, look how beautiful that is. Isn't that just, oh, love it. Okay, nature makes some amazing things if we can capture them. How fun is that? So I need to make sure you guys at home can see. Okay, so let me see. Okay, here's the flowers, painting, palette, perfect. Okay, whee. There it is. So, first thing I'm going to do is just take, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is take this red off this board because that's distracting, isn't it? Odorless mineral spirits. Bye bye. That, you know, it's not so bad at this stage, but when you have a plein air painting that's completely done and the wind blows it and it goes bloop right in your palette, oh, disastrous. And it has happened to me and almost everybody else that I paint with, so. Okay, so I am going to start off with, when I squint, my darkest darks, I'm gonna take a little ultra marine blue burnt umber and a little bit of purple and I'm going to mix a dark color dip it in the odorless turp squint and I will be doing I'm going to do a close-up painting of these flowers right here so if we're going to do a close-up what I see is the leaf this is tricky because you also have to have some draw drawing skills unless you're going to just do far away clumps which far away clumps are kind of fun to do sometimes too i you know when you paint things like this in your yard you're going to learn things you never knew before like wow i didn't realize those leaves were that pointy <laughs> or you know okay there's our big leaf there's another down here that I see. All right, and then these flowers, the flowers. I'm not trying to do a photographic painting here. Oh, I'm enjoying this breeze so much. Um, so it doesn't have to be photographic, but you at the very least have to have the right number of petals, okay? So there are five, five petals. And the center of these is white. So we're gonna take the paint off the middle part, just like that, right? And I'm gonna add a little green to my dark mix when I do my next one. Boy, these are hard to do when they're moving. 
wind blowing. This is one of the challenges about painting in plain air, too, is you've always got the wind. So there's two of them. And the Feng Shui rule is basically you want one, three, or five. And you know, painting flowers is really not my favorite thing to do. Um, I love to paint animals. And painting herbs and greenery might be cool. But painting flowers just isn't really my jam. But they're only here for such a short time, I thought it would be a waste not to record them. Do a quick little video so some of you at home could also do them, you know. Okay, so these come up on a stem like this. And they're kind of weird looking. One, two, three, four, five. The leaves have one, two. They have five. Oh, I added a little viridian to that black dark mixture that I put on. So there's three, here's four, and then that guy's missing, right? And I'm gonna add a little cad yellow in. Oh, what a relief, the neighbors must be done mowing the lawn, thank God. It seems like, and this is true, no matter where you go paint, there's gonna be noise. I was in the middle of a nature preserve deep in the woods and a state tree cutting company came along and started cutting trees down. Granted, it was, you know, not within visible distance, but I could hear it. I couldn't believe it. I thought I had gotten to the most remote place in the world. Nope. So just be aware, don't be disappointed if you know, you are not able to always find places that are left alone. So I am just painting. And the crazy thing about what I'm trying to do is the wind is blowing. And so the shadows keep changing. So there was a shadow here, now it's here. You know, when I look up the shadows here, now it's there. So just have fun with this and just, you know, put, put the light where you see it. If you're trying to do a painting in your own yard, oh, my dog's having a fit. He wants to go to the beach. Isn't this fun? Look at that. All right. Oh, my goodness. This is so fun. So I see some dappled light in here. So in order for light to look light, it has to be next to dark. And for dark to look dark, has, you know, if it's next to a dark color, it's going to look lighter. If it's next to a light color, it's going to look darker. Something good for you to know as you start your paintings out. So ahead of time, you can kind of plan that, right? Okay. Now, this whole entire board looks like it needs to have some color. So I'm just going to put in some <laughs> random color. There's my guard dog. That's what he does. Put in a little bit of purple, lizard and crimson, a little black. To me, this is really fun because I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda, ugh, the exhaust smell. Sometimes I wish I was in a little hut in the middle of the woods. Um, these guys are gonna be kind of, you know, in detail. But I might do a little more right here, down here, or up here that aren't gonna be as detail. So right now I'm just building, I'm squinting and I'm looking in that mass of beautiful, uh, geraniums down there and I'm trying to figure out exactly which you're going to be doing too when you try this try to figure out exactly what you want in there so so these come like this this like this and you're just constantly reassessing 
what you're doing. That little hint of yellow is just because we're going to be painting purple. Purple and yellow are complementary colors, right? Okay, a little black. You guys see this all right? There is probably a little more green in here than what I'm putting in. But I'm negative painting, like behind the leaf. You see how I did that? If this is the stem and I'm going to negative paint, it means I'm going to paint around it. So I'll go next to it. See how I did that? I went next to it. And you don't want to do it too much because you don't want it to look drawn in. You want to keep some lights here and there and some darks here and there. Oh, I think I got a bug on me. So we're going to put a little dark here. A little green up over here. I see greens and yellows and beiges and all kinds of lovely colors everywhere. This is so much fun. Okay, so we're starting now to build the picture. We're starting to build the story of our own unique little experience here. I'm going to use Naples, a little cad red light, a little white. I'm going to mix a little bit of a pinky kind of color. Use some pink and just kind of put a little in here and there. That's too white. I don't want it that white. I'm going to add a little ochre. Just because I like this light. Ooh, that's bad. It's because my, my wipe cloth got gross. So flip it over. Start new. And there we go. I'm down with that. You see what I did? Just practice with things. Just take... Take something you enjoy and just work with it. So, there's that. Now, taking a little purple, I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna put it here. Remember this little mistake? I like it, I'm gonna leave it. Take a little purple, put it here. We're gonna make that purple a whole lot lighter very soon. But first, the little purple here. It's almost a gray purple, isn't it? So we're going to take our purple, put a little white in there, a little liz la, 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 lizarin crimson, which is your burgundy color if you don't have a lizarin, and just touch these just to get an idea. Okay. So I'm going to stick something here like that I think they need to be a little more red don't you a little more pink there we go add a little lizard and crimson and white oh and you get these nice pastel colors and just put your brush down and pull it in don't go all the way to the center remember the center's white so we're gonna put our brush down and just pull it in and we're not gonna go to the center center is white. I know I repeated myself. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. Two purple, add a little alizarin and crimson. Two red, add a little white. Plus, you don't want these all the same color. You definitely don't want these all the same color because there's different shadows. The wind is blowing. I mean, you're not just painting a flower, you're painting the sun and the light and the wind and nature. This is why plein air painting is so much more difficult than studio painting. So much more difficult. People don't understand. You're not just out having fun doing a painting, right? Okay. So there's that. Oh, look at these luscious colors. Oh, it just screams summer's here. Summertime. Finally a beautiful sunny day. This is lovely. 
So we're gonna, you know, suggest a few things. By the way, you may hear some of my Orioles and Purple Martins and we have all kinds of cool birds around here. Red, red-breasted grosbeak. I'm gonna put that dark. That's that's a little bit. I didn't, I wasn't down with that down there. I don't want a flower down there. I don't want the eye to go down there. So I'm gonna take some dark and just put a little dark, and I'm okay with that. Okay. So now, even though it's kind of just a mumbo jumbo, it's actually starting to kind of look like what we got going on there. What do you think? It's starting to. If you say no, you'll make me cry. Just kidding. Gotta have really tough skin as an artist, by the way. I'm not sure how many of you have learned this by now, but art is subjective. So what that means is one person might love your art and another might not like it at all. And that's true with judges also. So you might get into a show and you know, yours, yours doesn't win and you don't understand why you don't even like the one that did. Well, because that's the one that the, that the judge liked and art is subjective. So if you don't have that kind of thick skin, art's not for you. You're gonna be sad and depressed and set yourself up for a downfall. If you look at art as just the joy of being present, paint what you love to paint, paint what makes you happy, then you win every time you win. You already won if you did that. Okay, so I'm just looking in there and seeing a bunch of different stuff, right? I'm gonna take a little green and white. If you notice, I'm using green, a lot of green. If you haven't, by the way, done your color mixing of green, start mixing greens. Now I'm just putting a few, I'm looking down there and I'm seeing that these leaves are kind of pointy, right? I'm just gonna stick a few of these in. Just to suggest the kind of leaves that we've got but I don't want them to be the focal point either. So if it's, if it's too bright, take a little dark and make it gone. Just put a dot here and a dot there. It doesn't matter what it is. Your eyes will make it up. Trust me, they will every time. Your eyes will make up the rest. So we are getting to where we're about ready to finish our flowers. I'm just putting in a few drops. When I look where I see green, oh, I see green here. Oh, I see a little green here. Okay. Now we're gonna move along to light green. Add white to your Viridian sap green, whatever green mix you were using. And we're just gonna add a few highlights here and there just to give this a little movement okay so when I look I see like that and that's it and that's all I don't want to overwork this I really like paintings that are not overworked so next thing we're gonna do I'm gonna wash off my brush I'm gonna use the same exact brush. Here's another cool thing. If you got a bunch of paint on your brush, you can always grab a stick nearby and take your paint and just do this. That'll, that'll clean it off pretty good. It's kind of like my box in my studio that I use. So when I look at these flowers, the centers are like a pinky white. So take a little bit of your pink, a little bit of your white, and let's try this. Let's see what happens if we do this. Is that convincing? I don't know. You don't want to do every one either because you want them to be moving. <laughs> Again, you're painting not just flowers, you're painting actually the sun on them, the wind on them, 
So you're painting life, plain air from life. If you overdo it, you can always come back in and add a little dark too, okay? So that's no worries there. Now I wanna take and make it even whiter. Put a little white in here. Magic's in your highlights, but they have to be subtle. Like that's not subtle, not at all. I don't even like that one down there. I don't want the eye let out either. I use my fingers a lot when I paint, by the way. So. And you know, you can even leave a little bit of your underneath of your board. Why not? Sure you can. This is plain air painting. This is not a finished studio painting. This is not, oh, I'm gonna put this in a show. No, this is just, you're out, you're having fun, you're practicing your skill, and you're having a great time. That's what you're doing. Okay, so a little burnt sienna here and there. I'm gonna stick in a few little spots. Burnt sienna. Okay, and then a couple highlights, and we're gonna call this done. I almost see yellow in there, so I'm gonna dab cad yellow light and white just dab it in a couple of these I'm afraid of overdoing it and then there's also green in the center I'm not sure what it is so what I'm gonna do is take uh, my green mix add white and I'm just gonna tap it like this so do you see it not really it's very subtle but it's in there if you look so some more than others maybe you know, another thing I just noticed, this flower is merging, and these are definitely separate. So I don't want that to merge. All right. I'm very happy with this. Very happy with this. I think this is fun as can be. Very fun painting. How did yours turn out? Here it is. I have to say thank you to all my Patreon sponsors thank you to all of my subscribers i have 50 my goal is a thousand um if you like my videos hit like and subscribe and um if you know brad pitt tell him i said hi Say hi brad pitt hey let's see how this looks in here is it convincing let's bring you closer Doo -doo -doo -doo.